Hello, investors. This is Ted Zhang, Associate Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, August 8th, 4.34, coming to you from Fort Lauderdale with tonight's Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. Well, I'm back after about a week. Hopefully you enjoyed my four days of commentary. And so let's let's get right into it. Market state, we're in a correction still. Uh, market leaders, short-term and medium-term trends are all with the bearish downtrend. Uh, there are some stocks starting to hold up and reveal themselves. And I will go over 15 stocks that I am watching, tracking their relative strength and looking to buy, especially if we get a follow through day. Um, we still need to see some volatility come down, especially on the right sides of charts. There's still a lot of megaphone patterns. So just looking, looking out for that. Uh, and long-term trend, still above the 200-day, so we still have that bullish green arrow. What happened today? Jobless claims, data sparks a broad three day, a day three rally. So tomorrow will be the first day that we start looking for a follow-through day. And what that is is it's a day that shows a lot of power backed up with stocks. Um, right now, the metric we look for is at least above 1.5%, but ideally above 1.7% with volume tracking higher than the previous day. So today, all right, big eight up 2.75% today, RGA up 3.08% today, S&P up 2.3% today, equal weighted up 1.81%, Q's up 3.06%, equal weighted up 2.68%, Dow up 1.75%, mid caps up 2.17%, Small caps, Russell, up 2.4%. Global 60-40, up 1.21%. And Grotection, up 0.7%. So let's jump right into the charts. Um, starting off, as always, with the S&P 500. So we have this, this level here in this prior breakout, which we're still not above. We did reclaim the 100-day today, but we're still below the 20-week moving average. At the same time, to me, this, this kind of just looks like a wedging rally up. As you can see, huge volume down on these three days and now contracting volume on the days up. And that is, that's never really healthy action, but we'll see if we get a follow through day tomorrow. That will definitely force us to change our bias, at least to the upside for the time being. Um, we go on a 60 minute chart. This is the bear flag that I'm seeing right now. And at the same time, if I had an EMA on here, we're right up against it. And price action wise, this is at the same time, it's it's still an inside day to yesterday's outside reversal. Uh, and this type of volatility yesterday, pushing up, closing at the lows, and now today gapping up, closing at the highs. That's a lot of volatility that we want to avoid. And this often happens during corrections and bad markets. Q similar action, bear flag. Still below the 100 days, so even weaker, wedging up on contracting volume after so much distribution. So definitely still not favorable in my view. Look at this, still three weeks down on just expand, expansive volume. We are starting to see some support reclaiming that 40 week so far. So maybe that was the low for this, but I'd still expect a lot of volatility here, especially next week we have CPI, PPI, and a whole slew of economic data. Dow hanging in there. This is stronger than the rest, reclaiming the 50 day today, actually. Midcaps still below, declining 50 and declining 100, just wedging up here, but found support to 200. Small caps, like that's the megaphone I'm talking about. Huge volatility, uninterested, uninteresting until there's some sort of tight action. And that goes for the mid caps as well. VIX. Why is the VIX? VIX had a, a huge spike, the highest spike since COVID. So that's definitely significant. A lot of fear came into the markets that we're heading for some crisis, but that never materialized. And we are backing off here, but still above that 20 level. So volatility still stays elevated for now. Dollar, we sank as yield sank a few days ago off that scare and went so far rallying, but still just looks like a bear flag. Gold, 
just consolidating. Saw another failed breakout, but just continuing to build out this right side. If this could really tighten up, I believe we are go going to see higher gold prices. This base is starting to get very constructive on this right side. Gold miners hanging in there, holding the 100-day, right, closing right below the 50-day. Still a lot of just volatility on this right side. We tried to break out, saw a failed breakout, leaked off, and just, just trading there. Silver miners, way weaker. Below the 100-day, 50-day, and 21 EMA. Um, lower lows in the space. This space has pretty much failed, and this is going to need a lot more time. Bitcoin, though, staged a nice, really strong undercut reversal. Um, I'll quickly take us over the trading view to take a look at the actual Bitcoin chart. Pull up a weekly here, too. Go on the daily first. Huge shakeout below this 54,000 level. We reclaimed. We reclaimed that, and then we also reclaimed this previous low, 56,500. And at the same time, that coincides with the 40-week moving average. And also, um, give me one sec. And also the 10-month moving average and last month's low. So this is actually starting to get really constructive for Bitcoin here. Um, this could probably use another couple months here um, looking at this action. Maybe it, next month we come back to 70K, then put an inside month, and then we try breaking out. So I'm still very favorable on Bitcoin after this action. It was looking weak earlier this week, but the week is long and so far proves to be a shakeout. Continuing on, bonds starting to sell off a bit as just really honestly overreaction from the markets in terms of heading for a recession. And it seems like those fears have come down a bit since Japan has found some, some stability. Same with TLT and then of course, since bonds and yields are inverse to one another, yields are heading higher. And you might be like, hey, Ted, like rates are rates are rising. Why, why are stocks rising with it? Well, before we were in a more inflationary fear environment, and now we're heading to a market fearing recession. So anything that indicates that we're not heading for a recession is a positive for the market. And that is why it's so crucial to pay attention to the narrative, the dominant narrative of the market. All right, so tail of the tape. Let's see what's significant. Um, still in the correction, of course. VIX has come off a lot. Fear and greed is an extreme fear, but is improving a bit. And so that's starting to act as a contraindicator, but that doesn't mean we just plunge in. We still need to see price and the stock to act well. AAII, bulls still above historical averages, came off a bit, but bears, huge jump. So it just seems like, I mean, to me, AAII literally explains the volatility. Some people are super bullish, some people are super bearish, and that's why there's huge ping pong. NAM also came down 75.3, down 11, so that's good to see, but that still remains quite elevated. We're still operating on the bear case for below the 21 EMA, below the 50 day, and even the 100 day, we, re we just reclaimed, but we're still below the 20 week. Today's news, weekly jobless claims, data below expectations, and that sparked the rally. So right now we have down down one for day count to up one still six days below the eight ema six days below the 21 ema expectations negative but if we get a follow through day we'll flip that to at least positive um to have a positive bias and perhaps buy a few stocks that are holding up and breaking out of bases yeah so as you can see spx atr is 1.47 percent so that's extremely elevated so these 1.52% days are definitely in the normal. Um, sectors that are up today, pretty much everything, as the video title explained, broad, broad, very broad rally in the markets with Bitcoin miners, semis, RK, cyber, um, and then the S&P sectors as well. Nothing really significant that, that was down today. Um, our RVAB, because we reclaimed the 100 day, we took a small, small position Added small, small to SPLG, bring our beta up to 0 0.35. And then the bottom line, again, is jobless claims data sparks broad day three rally. All right. So let's talk about, let's talk about some charts of interest for me, at least. So let's start off with, let's, let's put this, put this in alphabetical order. ASTS, can't really not bring this up. This literally did not has not seen a correction. If you've been trading the stock or in the stock, you don't even know that there's a broad market correction. 
and we are we are looking to have an all time high weekly close here, and maybe perhaps even sooner or later all time high prices. Earnings in six days, and pretty much the background of this is that um, ASTS is partnered with Verizon with Telecom as we build off more five G in the next gen um, next gen internet. Uh, so as you can see, really strong action, just trending healthily above the 21 EMA. Axon, earnings gap, uh, they, they, they had really nice numbers. They guided forward revenues and earnings up. They saw their taser sales um, rise significantly as well. You see 2024, 2025 estimates are quite strong with a 41% growth rate. Um, perhaps law enforcement's arming up for, for potential hostile election. So these next three months in post-election could get quite rough. And that's what Axon's confirming here, breaking out to all-time highs. RSI confirming that. Kava, this is still really this is still holding in there, even though it's below the 50-day. The 50-day is flattening, but we are back above the 21 EMA and held the 100-day quite well. And on the weekly, this is just a nice base forming. Undercut reversed, held the 30-week now reclaim the 20 week. So we are just building a base here and we have earnings in 14 days. So this could really give us an earnings gap as well. Carvana off earnings gap to the new highs, but faded, but still tightening up. So still quite constructive here. You can see it's 125% year over year growth um, in earnings. Home builders is another one holding up in traditional and easing cycles. If the Fed decides to lower rates, home builders can do quite well. And DHI is one that broke out at all time highs starting to put in the high handle here. So that's another one I'll watch. Fortinet, cyber, gapped up on earnings. 39% uh, surprise on 50% year over year. Pre-tax margin, 37%. We really need clear of these highs right here for us to really get going. And with crowd with CrowdStrike seeing their own failures, other cybersecurity names uh, could definitely take market share from CrowdStrike. INSM had that really good phase trials data. Uh, Earnings was pretty much a nothing burger, but someone's we're, we're finding demand at this level here off the 50 days. So if we tighten up, this could be definitely one in play as well. Lennar, another home builder, just building a handle. Melly, another one that's extremely strong. Um, weekly base breakout. So maybe we've got some tight days here, maybe a pullback back into the base. That could be a buy like that. Now is another one on earnings that broke out into highs, but now pulled back in with the weight in the market. But we're really starting to form a nice, nice tight pivot here. So over those highs, potentially you can take a starter. Oh no, I love the brand of the shoes. Still some volatility on the right side of the base. If we really get up here and tighten up, then we have to get really interested. Earnings in five days as well. And that is coming out from this huge IPO base. We start getting more earnings acceleration in the market and Wall Street loves it. This could really get going. Palantir is another one on earnings. And it's pretty strong action. Tennis ball came back down to the 200 and all, now all the way back up to highs. And when you see this weekly outside reversal, it usually means really strong action. So definitely want to be on watch for when it, quiet down, when it quiets down a little bit. Spotify. As you can see, this earnings acceleration line, it's been continuing. We had some nice earnings growth, but still very choppy action. This is what I'm talking about with the megaphone. So we need to tighten up here to really get interested in this name, but they have really good earnings and sales. Um, I love the product. I'm addicted to the podcast. Many people are catching on the podcasts. And it seems like podcasts are the new way to get, get information nowadays. TMDX, still strong action, but once again, megaphone action so we need some contraction to get interested but i've talked about this prior on this earnings gap back here this amazing earnings and sales forward guidance on this name there's huge demand for organ replacements in the u.s and the current system of using cold storage is not as um, efficient as what or as what tmdx and the organ care system delivers and finally, Upstar is another one on earnings. As you can see, there's a theme here. A lot of times you want to look for stocks off earnings, whether buying buying on the earnings gap or waiting for their continuation, because 
when you trade these catalysts, you know there's a catalyst. You know there's a reason for the stock to go up. And coupled with earnings catalysts, we want to see huge growth, huge revenue growth. Um, surprises are even better for increasing forward guidance, some analyst price target moves, and that can lead to explosive moves. So upstart above here, maybe we've got a flag and look to play that as well. Um, so yeah, th those are those are 15 names I am watching personally. Um, we'll bring back the 21 over 21 next week. Potential day four follow through day tomorrow. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll take it day by day, week by le week, level by level, stock by stock. And we're always focused on risk. That is the most interesting and challenging thing in investing and in trading and money management is dealing with risk, finding asymmetrical entries and letting the upside take care of itself. So that, that will wrap it. As always, we would like to hear from you. I would like to hear from you too. Uh, my email is ted at revereasset.com. And then you can reach out to me, to Dan and Don at revereasset.com. Our phone is 855-REAL-WELL. That is 855-732-5932. You can also reach out to me on my Twitter as well. Website is revereasset.com. YouTube is Revere Asset. And once again, we named our flagship portfolio Grow Protection. Uh, that means we want to participate when the market is in an uptrend and protect money when we're in a downtrend. Yes, we've been slightly lagging the, the indexes off the lows, but that is that, that is the name of the game and trend following. Um, Connor shared that quote from Jesse Livermore, the first eighth and last eighth of the move are often the most expensive. We're trying to catch that meat in the middle. Um, in other words, we are playing between the 30-yard lines as the goal line as the end zone and between the end zone and the 30 is often very volatile, very choppy. And that's oftentimes contributes to a lot of losses in investors and traders. So finally, if you're interested in becoming a client, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to hear from you and I can answer any questions or concerns that you may have. As always, I'll wrap it up for Thursday, August 8th. It is 4.51 PM. This is Ted Zhang with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.